up drama family this is your boy dramatic this is dramatic reviews today i'm going to talk about the stepping stone song a little bit and then i'm also going to talk a little bit more about this mgk Eminem stuff because i noticed a lot of the comments um, that people were leaving on my last video were kind of pointing at about 70 percent chance that Eminem's going to come back with this um i think it's about five percent chance Eminem doesn't uh, so I think if you're worried about him not coming back with something, uh, I don't worry about it. Uh, Joe Budden, um, you saw my video on that. I go check out my last video. He's just been talking a lot about Eminem because Eminem mentioned him. Um, he dissed Revival back in the day. Ever since then, they've had a little bit of beef. He's saying that M hasn't talked to him in a long time. In the last podcast, he's saying he's a much better rapper than Eminem. I was a little surprised myself. I think Joe can be rather opinionated, but I think he got a little ahead of himself on that one. As far as the MGK thing goes, he's kind of been silent, playing in the background. He's basking in the spotlight. He loves it. Um, he's getting all the attention right now. Eminem will be showing up soon. Um, I keep hearing rumors of Friday, so let's look out for that tomorrow. Um, but Mr. Porter said yes, when he has a chance, he will get to this. Um, Crooked Eye did respond to this. Uh, shout out to Jay Green and some other cats who uh, gave me the lowdown on Crooked Eye. Personally, um, I'm a big Crooked Eye fan, so when he talks, I like to listen. He's a real down-to-earth cat with a lot of bars, dude. He can spit. Uh, so if you haven't heard Crooked Eye or the Horseshoe Gang, his whole little posse, it's his little brothers actually, and they're, they're fire. So, uh... Yeah, but I don't know. I think I think MGK definitely has already done his part. He's just playing the, the waiting game just like we are. Um, and there's nothing we can do but wait. Yeah, I'm a little anxious, I gotta admit. Only because really, like when I look for music to review um, or just stuff to listen to or bump on my ride, I really don't find that much stuff lately. So when this M dropped, um, I've just been bumping Kamikaze since it dropped. Like, period. That's like all I listen to because... I'm just excited to hear bars. Like I'm excited to hear rap again. So it's 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 dope to me. Um, even the MGK, I've been listening to the MGK disc, dude. That's fire, bro. That the beat's tight. It's a dope song. It's kind of like back to back by Drake. Um, when he released it, it was like not just a diss track. It was something that you could ride to, and bump into ride. So I liked it for that reason. We're gonna review Stepping Stone, which is a song about his his crew, like all of his homies that he grew up with. Um, if you don't know much about D12, I guess the best way for me to put it is when Eminem first got signed to Aftermath, he already had kind of like his homies, you know, and one of those homies was Royce to 5 9 like he already knew him before he got signed. He was like hyping um, some of his shows for him and he was his hype man, but uh, then you had Proof who was also his hype man, um, just at different times, and then you had... Um, and it, don't get me wrong, Royce the 5'9 was not in D12. I'm just mentioning him because, like, he knew him, you know, back then. Uh, Kniva, who's another one. Uh, Swifty McVeigh is another one. Bizarre. Um, these are all guys that um, M tried to put on, you know, and Mr. Porter. I'm not even trying to forget him because he's more on the production side of things. He raps. He's a good rapper, but he really kind of just... Um, helps out in a lot of other ways, you could say. Um, I've noticed that when times got tough for D12, it seemed like Mr. Porter was always kind of still around. So it makes me think that he's like, just got his hands in a lot more stuff besides rapping. I thought D12 was pretty hard. Like when Devil's Night dropped, uh, I thought Swifty McVeigh could kill it. Um, Kniva uh, was nice. I thought Bizarre was just nuts. And I thought order was like unique kind of like a sheet louch or lucha however you say that from locks um just a different vibe and uh they were a good group they were kind of like a bunch of mcs sitting in the middle of this big mainstream world because of their uh big homie eminem and eminem was doing his thing he was making mainstream music and he was releasing you know just stuff that was just funny and bar heavy with some of his friends but he really was still probably the biggest rapper in the world at the time so d12 was kind of just basking in that with him but like how do you 
live up to those kind of expectations. So I feel like they always kind of played the background, but everybody knew who they were. Everyone knew it was Eminem's homies. And a lot of us rappers, like if I had a big homie who was Eminem, who would some would consider the biggest rapper in the world, I got the hookup, you know what I mean? Like that's the big homie, he's definitely gonna make me famous. But that's not really how it works, because even he has bosses. So um, when you're dealing with major labels and stuff like that, like they're with Interscope and uh, big, big, big dogs, there's nothing that you could really do. He's small time compared to those guys. So uh, he's just doing what he does. He's just rapping, making his music. Yeah, he started Shady, but Shady's just under the umbrella of like Aftermath and Interscope. So you got to just, there's a lot of hands involved. You know what I mean? It's not just... Oh yeah, I want my homies to be rich tomorrow, so let's just make that happen. It just doesn't work like that. Now, with that being said, um, he airs this out on his new song, Stepping Stone, um, off of his Kamikaze album. Uh, it's not the first song he's made kind of addressing his issues with his friends, but um, I didn't really expect to hear it right now. I don't know, you'll see. Check this out. The plan was put everyone in position so that they knew how to stand on their own. And I don't want to open up wounds. I just noticed the proof was wrong when we go in the booth. Because the truth is the moment the proof died. So so you can see he gets real personal. I mean, he starts talking about some issues that they have, you know, inside of the group. Stuff that you don't necessarily see on the outside. Um, so I find it interesting that they kind of like faded, you know, into darkness. But... You know, I also understand it. I mean, when you get to Eminem's level, like, it's probably not as easy to kind of just go hang out with your homies and play some Madden or whatever it is. I mean, it seems like it would be. I mean, but I think they're a lot more busy than they probably look. Either that or, like, you know, MG, MGK said, M just locks himself up on his crib and no one ever sees him. So, I mean, it, it is what it is, but um, I do know that they were very close. Um, I do know that Am gives a lot of respect to his homies, um, knows they're good rappers, and I think that he uh, is just kind of, um, I think he might just be a little overwhelmed um, with the whole thing because this has been going on for years. All of the trips to BET and the rappers, I wish that we would apologize quick. Maybe y'all could have clicked and got you some features, but that's water under the bridge. But I'm washing my sins in it till my conscience is clear. All right, so. He really touches on some stuff that's interesting to me here, where he brings up the fact that they went to BET a few times. He's talking about award shows and probably like ciphers and stuff like that. Uh, and they really didn't reach out or mingle with other big name artists. Because, you know, everybody's there. And I think he was just kind of a, I don't want to say a jab back, but a defense on his part saying, hey... You know, I did put you guys in some positions to kind of help yourself out, but you didn't really take advantage of it. Um, that, that, I don't think he meant to be disrespectful by that. I think he was just kind of standing up for himself and saying, this isn't all on me, but I own a lot of this. And that's one thing about Eminem that I find unique is he's always wore his heart on his sleeve and he's never been embarrassed or humiliated or ashamed about just telling the truth, you know, um, and I like that, you know, a lot of rappers kind of put up a front, I mean, the jewelry's fake and shit, so, uh, it's just a big game for them, and it's cool, shout out to them, it's entertainment, it works for them, they sell millions of records, and it is what it is, but what I do like about him myself is he's a little more genuine, a little more honest, now that he's older, he's definitely gonna bring a different approach, so a lot of people are gonna be disappointed, because they don't get this kind of M, or this kind of M, but, He's in his 40s now, so he's going to act a little different. That's just how it is. He's grown. But him talking about, like, the day that Proof died, so did the group. I mean, that's some deep shit. Like, um, it, it kind of makes me feel like you know, there's a lot more deeper underlying stuff to this, you know. Like, there's some, like, unsaid stuff. And they've just had a hard time getting over it. And, you know, any time a group like that, you know, friends, it's really close, and then you lose one of them who gets shot and killed at the club, I mean, it's obviously going to affect you guys. Um, you just wouldn't hope that it would, you know, break up your friendship. We'll say M put out a couple albums with D12, you know, and he'd feature on their songs with them and was trying to, to do what he could. It wasn't like he just left them hanging. I know we kept our hopes up, but the longer we spend living this lie that we live, the less is left for closure, so let's let this go. It's not goodbye to our friendship, but D12 is over. All right, well, there you have it. He said D12 is over. I mean, I think he pretty much put it all out there. 
let everybody know, you know, like there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. He mentions how he's been taking care of a lot of these guys for a long time. And, and we know Eminem has a lot of money, but at what point do you cut your friends off? Because you're like, man, like I had been helping. I've been helping pay bills. I've been helping, you know, feed your families and do this stuff. But now at some point, like we need to, to move on. And hopefully that doesn't end our friendship completely. But the, the group is done. So, sounds like we ain't gonna be hearing nothing anytime soon from D12. So, RIP D12. Uh, you guys were dope, man. All the way from Purple Hills to Devil's Night. I liked a lot of that stuff. This song, good song. I like the beat. It's the only beat like it on the whole album. There's really no hip hop type beat, really. Um, and I mean, and when I say that, anybody that knows Eminem. Can agree that a lot of these beats on this album are just out of character for him and that's a good thing he's been murdered it's got a dope feel to it and it's just got a genuine feel he was real genuine on the track so i like it for that so let's break this down the beat i would give this probably a four because i liked it um the the lyrics i would give it a four shout out to joe budden because you said he's not a very good storyteller which is weird to me his flow i would give it a three just because he's been snapping lately and this is a little just normal compared to what he's been doing um the hook i'm gonna give it a two because um i know people are gonna be mad at me for saying this but a lot of times m does these weird like singing hooks that are probably my least favorite part about eminem um, which really isn't a bad thing because i think he's like the greatest rapper in the world but like as far as his singing sometimes on his choruses, like when he tries to do his little harmonies, I just, I'm just kind of sick of him. I wish he'd get just a little more high quality hooks and better production on his choruses. But yeah, man, and as far as all this MGK and Rap Devil and all of this stuff, you know, versus Rap God and Eminem, I really think we are about to see something from Eminem tomorrow, Friday. But until then, make sure you go follow my Twitter, that is Dramatic Reviews on Twitter, you'll find it. Make sure you go follow my Instagram, that's Dramatic123 on Instagram, you'll find it. And hey, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, I know it's asking a lot of you guys, but you've been amazing, so hey, I'll see you next time. This is Dramatic Reviews, I'm out. Peace.